Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro. Today, we talk about one thing and one thing only. How wide is too wide? Wide-angle lenses have gotten pretty extreme, and I have a 16 millimeter lens that I got a few months ago for video. Like that was the main focus of this lens was shooting video. And I've shot more stills than video with this lens. And I have to tell you something, the ultra wide angle is really difficult to deal with. Difficult. I'm hoping that I can find some sort of a happy place when it comes to my wide angle lenses, but I think 16 is too wide for street photography. Welcome, Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for taking the time to check in with us. So today we're gonna look at the images that I shot on Sunday to see your opinion, whether you're watching live or watching after the fact. I'm just interested to hear your opinion on these photographs and if you think 16 millimeter is too wide <laughs> so let's get into lightroom which is obviously how i share look at and view my photographs now i have figured out in the last week how to live stream in real life, how to have a great setup, how to make it so my camera doesn't disconnect, have stabilized footage. I have, let's go Warbucks, I'm glad you're here. I have all of that working, finally. So this photo set, I went out, but I believe I chose the wrong lens. So I'm cursed because when I do these lens diaries, I bring one lens only and the limited perspective when that perspective is so wide is actually quite limiting. I realized within the first few frames, you can see me go here from far away to punching in closer, but look at all of the background people. Look at the what seems to be infinite depth of field that happens when you're shooting with this lens and also i do believe i'm shooting here at like 2.8 because i hadn't even set my aperture really yet let's look and see yeah i'm shooting at 2.8 look at the depth of field at 2.8 which is wide open with this lens so there's no depth of field when you shoot ultra wide. So it becomes super difficult to really isolate just your subject. So this is me hacking at street photography. And also there is some weirdness that happens at the edges. You can see there's a little bit of distortion that happens at the edges. Um, and or I'm crazy and you guys all think that this ultra wide looks great. This is a photograph that I like, but my issue is the way that the lines converge. You really, you can't have a straight line. I think I was aiming for this. Oops. What did I just do? Did I quit Lightroom? I mighta. I mighta. No, I did not. I just switched programs. So what I notice is that these lines are really hard to stay straight. And I lined this one up relatively straight here in the center, but how aberrated these lines are, how these lines converge out, how strange this nut looks. But because the person's relatively central, it's kind of okay. So again, this is the stuff that I see when I'm looking at my own photographs here. But I do, there's something there. Julie, um, I mean, sorry, Vicky. Ah, oh, thank you. Everybody's blue. This one I marked, the straight on one. 
This one I marked, which is super dope. This one's actually a little crooked. I don't know. So when I line up the ground here to be straight, these lines converge. So it just becomes like, I'm so used to shooting with the 50. It's just really tricky, tricky, tricky. This guy was shooting with a twin lens reflex. Like this one takes a picture. This is how he's seeing the picture. Um, this is a medium format camera. I believe it's a, a Roloflex. Although I didn't see it from the front. But I did get some cool shots of him with the Roloflex. This picture appears to show a little bit more depth of field than the last one did. You can see with him being in focus and his watch being in focus, but back here being out of focus. And I do believe that I'm still at 2.8, which I am. So this guy with his rolly, there's a picture here, I think. Preston, I'm glad you're here, buddy. Um. Oh yeah, I mean, doing these, Preston, it's like I'm trying to do stuff that I don't see on YouTube, doing live photography, doing live photo walks. I actually want to do a photo walk in Toronto with more than just me. I want to do it with you guys. So if you're in Toronto and interested in being a part of this photo walk, join my mailing list and pay attention to my com community page because I'm going to post to everybody who I have their email, meaning if you've joined my mailing list, and I'm also going to post it on the community page. It's going to be a Sunday coming up, and I'm going to stream it live for behind the picture. So this guy with his rolly is kind of dope. Do let me know if you're interested in being a part of one of these photo walks where we pick a very cool area of Toronto I think the next place we're going to go is the waterfront, possibly underneath the Gardner Expressway um, is a place that I'm thinking about. Also, Underpass Park is another place that I'm thinking about. And you can see I lost focus just on that last picture because somehow face tracking grabbed this lady, maybe because she smiled. <laughs> Yeah, are you what city are you in, Preston? This is some low angle, wide angle, and now I notice when I get lower, I'm able to keep more lines straight. They definitely converge here, but they don't converge out here quite as much. They do converge here a little and here a little. But straighter here and straighter as we go down towards the center of the frame. But there's definitely something here. Definitely something here. This is the first like low angle stuff that I think that I shot that day. Do let me know what city you're in, Preston. If you're in Toronto, that's definitely something that we can make sure that you find out about. Yeah, I mean... Am I turning the am I turning the fence? You guys have to tell me whether you're watching live or watching after the fact what your thoughts are on ultra wide angle photography on how it kind of flattens subjects. It almost gives like a little bit of a two dimensional feeling because it makes them feel so narrow this way at certain angles. Um, these lines down here, very straight. These lines over here, very aberrated. Um, you need to play, Vicky says she needs to play with an ultra wide angle more. Yeah. And again, I, that's what I'm doing through this series is I'm trying to see if I'm missing something with how to shoot with this lens. Cause honestly, this is the widest lens I've ever had. I've never had a wide angle lens. That's a 16 millimeter. Like I've looked through an 11 millimeter but I've never seen, I've never shot with a 16. I got it to be able to hold my R5 at arm's length and talk the camera. Thought it was gonna be video only, but 
I don't like my 24 to 70, although I like my 24. I like a 24 millimeter. I like a 35. But um, I don't think that it's a strong enough, sharp enough lens when it's um, all together, or at least not my version. Again, thoughts. Very interested. This, again, I don't think that this is my finest street photography. I think that there's too many people. I think this was more um, a great live stream, but the photos that I'm that I care about are few. I definitely am. I'm okay with admitting it. Nashville, <laughs> you watch mostly Canadian-based channels. That's amazing. Well, welcome all the way up here to Toronto, and I guess I'm able to give you a little bit of a Toronto tour. Um, I love giving Toronto tours because this is my city. I was born here. I know it intimately. So it's nice that you're out of town because I am able to bring Toronto um, to more people for sure. And then you're, do I prefer the 24 over the 20? I'll say yes. I'll say this is what I need. I right now, the lenses I have are 16 24 to 70 50 85 100 millimeter macro 135 and i have a 70 to 200 now what i would like to do is replace my 24 to 70 with a 24 and a 35 and then I'll feel like I have all the lenses that I need because I'll have 16, 24, 35, 50, 85, 100, 135. And I, really, I don't ever really need to go past 135, the 70 to 200. Um, like, I don't really need it. I like it. It's it's a fun, lazy lens to have. But um, yeah, that's uh, I'm, I'm basically missing two lenses, which is a 24 and a 35. I feel like a, a 20 is too close to the 16 that I have. So there's something here. I mean, there's lots of dimension happening. There's something happening here. These two girls are relatively focused. There's things happening over here. There's posters. Like, there's something there, but like this building, this building, there's just also too much happening in this single frame. So I think a 24 is the ideal focal length. I definitely is what I'm saying, Jay. I agree with you. But you also understand how I'm trying to make this work. And as you see me go through the process of shooting these photos, all the different... Um, Vicky says she has a 24. She loves using it in tight spots. You can see how the light wasn't quite right, the way that the shadows are coming on his face. Like, his hat, his hair. I mean, that's not blocking him as much as just the sun being too high. And I went out at 6. So, it's curious as to... At 6, still, the sun was super high. So, um, yeah... The light on his face isn't great here. This girl had great light on her face. This is kind of a nice dimensional picture with the, the lady behind. This is something that might have worked. This guy turned to me like this, maybe. But is there too much street? Is there too much street? There's definitely leading line bringing you um, into him, for sure. There's definitely leading line bringing you into him, but um, is this it? The distortion that's happening over here is just so weird for me. <laughs> Turtle, poor Turtle's about to have a birthday, my guy. Don't be stressed. 30 is amazing. And by the way, happy birthday. If you're a couple of <laughs> eight hours away from being 30, bro, 30 is amazing. Wait till you hit 50. That's when you can actually start puking. 
30 is an amazing, amazing, amazing time. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the 30 Club, says Vicky. All right. This, I'm feeling this. There's something here. And again, this is one of those photos that it's like, okay, okay, this qualifies. This qualifies. I'll um, allow it. You know, this is one of those. There's just enough of this guy. I clipped the end of the violia, the violin, um, which sucks. Um, the bucket, that round, this is how, this is how squished this looks. This is a circle, which is supposed to be this. And look at, um, how compressed that looks. So yeah, this is what I see is the, is the compression on the edges and in the corners. It gets weird. So that's what I'm hyper conscious about. Thirties. Great. You'll be thrilled with 30 turtle. Um, All right. Fruit market. I found this picture really hard to take. I don't really know what's there. Um, Julie says um, that they're your favorite so far. Thank you. Turtle says you like the series. Thank you. Um, all my photography sucks, really. I'm like this stuff. <laughs> I'm really in a battle with um that's one picture that i'm like maybe it's okay but this perspective just isn't me it doesn't fit in even with my visual sensibility i don't know why i would do photography with a lens i don't use and think that it's gonna look like my work like this is anyways so it ended up being um i've Good shit, Turtle. Thank you for the warm wishes, dude. Thanks for popping in. I appreciate you. Um, Yeah, I, you can see, like... Uh, you can see it becomes really difficult when it comes to this lens for it to look like my photography. These kids reading books I thought were great. Um, when kids are usually this age on devices, but the three of them, different ages, super happy to just read books. She's this girl's playing with her dolls like it's nice no devices in sight so yeah i mean this is again maybe a photo that there's something there i managed to straighten the lines you can see me lowering myself just through these series of photos so i can get the lines straight and see a little bit more of his face um battling with the lines <laughs> you can see me battling with the lines um something here trying to use this corner some sort of depth thing i don't know if i succeeded or failed but these photos were hard like honestly i found it one of the only vertical photographs i took but vertical is not really a thing i think with this ultra wide i think it's made for horizontal um this band was super loud by the way if you're watching this and haven't seen the live stream where i live streamed making these photos make sure you watch that one next ray cleveland ray you're from arizona you're not from twitch welcome my guy mr arizona ray is an amazing nighttime time lapse photographer that it's just He's great. Ray Cleveland on Twitch, guys, if you're not following him already. This guy was a really cool artist. He was working on some paintings um, on the street, which he was displaying. He said, if I took a picture, it's usually by donation. And I told him that I would drop photos for him in his Instagram. So these are some of the ones that I shot. I really, this is another one of those photos that I'm actually okay with. I'm just gonna hide my, my camera. The people in the background create like a nice border for him and a nice separation from the actual busyness in the background. 
I actually like the fact that it's um it's like multi-layered. Like I'm kind of feeling it. So I I definitely stayed with him for a while. We're getting to the end of this um we're getting to the end of this set and also what I shot that day in the hour the top down view i actually really like i think that this is actually a cool shot as well i tried that's a cooler cool shot too where i lowered my angle rather than aiming more top down and cutting off heads i lowered myself and cut off less heads so there's something here this is another one of the ones that i feel like there's maybe something here maybe something here as far as a unique perspective the looking down this way perhaps could be something and then i tried to change my perspective to see what this view looked like and i don't think it's as interesting as it was the other way where i was standing um previously like basically right here and we're getting to the end of this set this is one of those shots where i'm photographing them but they thought that i was shooting inside this window this kid playing the violin was quite talented his glasses matched all right although some of these are a little soft because i lost uh i was really slow in the shutter speed and I just missed the focus, but I did make sure that I, I nailed the focus in a few like this one, but you can see this woman in the background. There's so, there's so much that I get, like, I don't want to see this, the guitar, this amp, all of this stuff. Like it ends up being that I just want to crop a vertical picture out of all of these horizontals. So for me, that tells me definitely that it's too wide for sure. This kid had talent though. This is the art car, which is a plant, <laughs> a planter full of soil. Very, very um, well-maintained Vespas. British style Vespa. Earlier on today, I went through and did color corrections and exposure corrections pretty much of all of these pictures. These are definitely, by the way, not... Let's go, Les. Glad you're here, my guy. These are definitely not the shots that, um, like, as they came out of the camera, I definitely worked on these and added a little bit of a treatment, corrected the exposure, added a little vignette, a little, little saturation. Now here, guys... I like this stuff for architecture. Like when it comes to not seeing people and just looking at line, shape, form, I kind of like this lens. In these last few photos, these last few photos are just that, which is me shooting this one building on my way home into the sun to just see if I can get something that feels special with this lens, making the lines somewhat realistic, straight, believable. Like I tried so many different combinations, but I feel like if I look up, look down and just find creative angles, there might be a way for me to like flip this photography and or at least flip the use of this lens to more this type of work and really l less of the portraiture that I'm trying to do. I think that that's I think that that's the thing that makes the most sense is just that's not the lens for it. Um, it seemed that many of your favorite shots were close to being mine. I'll show you what I flagged. Yeah, I didn't flag enough. Oh, I didn't flag enough. 
filters off. I didn't flag enough. I'll, I'll mention and just show you like things that I think as far as what worked, this picture worked. I think this works. The offset works. The expression works. The lines work. I think there's something there that works. This man with his rolly works. I think there's something there. The depth of field is okay. Of all of these frames, is that the best one? Not sure. It might be a shot of him looking down. Um, it might be a shot where he's right in there. Not sure, but there's something there. I think that works. Um, after that, maybe some of the low angle street photography, maybe some of this with the people walking down this street, maybe there's something there. I'm not married to it. After that, this man with the violin, I think there's something here as far as um, possibly usable photography. I think maybe I might be able to pull a photo here. There might be a photo here. I don't know. Maybe this Pink Floyd dude, but I doubt it. I really don't think so. Maybe there's something here. Again, not sure. I really have to mess with them. This band photography, and then I think there's something here with this guy. I think that's definitely a photo for sure. Um, like I'm literally calling out a handful of photos. And I think that there's something here which has nothing to do with people. I think to me, honestly, this is what I think like the best thing that I did that day is something here maybe this maybe this with the lines a bit straighter maybe there so you can see ultra wide angle photography from my perspective is incredibly hard ultra wide angle wide angle is anything less than uh 50 millimeter ultra wide angle i would say starts when you go sub 24 millimeter so 20 18 16 15 millimeter lens 11 10 like that starts to get into really bendy lines and ultra wide angle super super client or job or specialty specific um let me know if you agree with me where i'm saying the architecture stuff is the best stuff of the day let me know in chat or let me know in the comments if you agree all right i am going to look to see if we can do a fast search on some ultra wide angle photography on behance now i want to see how other photographers that are making high-end work are making photographs with super wide angle let's see what behance says let's see ways that it's being used in the creative field we're going to choose photography and we'll call it just wide angle wide angle photography beautiful let's look at some ways that it's being used i feel this is really wider than 
Maybe this is 24. I don't know if this is as wide as I'm shooting. Thoughts? Thoughts? 20 is when the lines start bending. Yes, agree. Composition be seems to be more challenging in ultra wide, and I'm using a 16. This is um, just a Behance profile. I'm not sure the lens that this photographer is using, but I'm willing to bet it's a 24. I'm willing to bet it's a 24. That's what I think. So one use of an ultra wide angle lens. Thoughts appreciated in the comments. Let's look at another use of ultra wide. Thoughts on perspective? I'm willing to bet this is a, a 16. This is very close to my perspective. I think the location really makes this interesting. The fact that there's dimension, the fact that he's aiming down. Okay, so uh, this is the closest to a 16 millimeter that I've seen so far. Now, shot from a distance creates an open space. This is not wide angle photography, buddy. This is shot with lenses that... This is um, Malt Cheek, which we've looked at before for Samsung can definitely appreciate this perspective for sure I don't know that's there's definitely it's not ultra wide angle there's a couple of images this picture I would say was a 24 again I still don't see Super wide angle. This is called wide angle. It's not telling me. And this is obviously trying to be sold for stock. Lots of dusty on the sensor. You understand Adobe has opened stock to everybody. All you need to do is submit through Behance. In everybody's profile, you can choose any one of your stories, any one of your stories, and you can add them to Adobe stock. All you need to do is sign up for Adobe stock connect Behance to your Adobe stock and then you can start showcasing it in your portfolio. So it's really actually quite genius. Is there going to be any wide angle photography that is um, special? Let's look at this. This is definitely wide angle photography. Definitely, this looks like it's a 16. Thoughts? Let's go 4-4. Four, four. I'm glad you're here, buddy. Thoughts on this? Thoughts on this ultra-wide angle? I need to see more. It's not enough frames. I need to see more. I think this is a 16, but I really like it. The question that I'm asking, how wide is too wide for lenses? How wide is too wide? This for a wide angle, this is how you shoot with a wide angle. What I'm trying to do, shoot people, I feel like it's, feel like I'm using this lens in a way 
<clears throat> that it's not supposed to be used. I feel like I should be using this lens only to shoot things, architecture, real estate, maybe. And here's another thing, real estate, shooting interiors, wide angle. I mean, this is not my work. We're just, I've just chosen this from Behance, but this is wide angle in a room. It makes any room look massive. It's the best way to shoot is with a wide angle. So, but this is probably a 24. This is probably a 24, I would bet. The question, how wide is too wide? It might even be a 20. I don't know. It's hard to say. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't give me any more stats other than wide angle. Is there one more inspirational wide angle thing we can find here? Maybe the Berlin Metro? This is definitely wide angle. You can tell from the distortion that's happening down here under my camera. This feels like a 16. Real estate is 16 to 24 millimeters, says 44. Like that's the lens range that photographers use. This is definitely, I would say, a 20, maybe a 16. It's really hard. It's really hard, especially if they're using a zoom lens, because this looks more like a 24 or even a 35, maybe a 24. Oh, yeah, from the research that you and Andy did? Yeah, it makes sense. 44 says that most... Um, most wide angle real estate or most real estate photography is done with a 16 to 24 millimeter lens range. Makes sense. One last story before we get into the photo reviews. Let's see if this is worthy of our attention. This almost looks like it was all shot on GoPro, which is 16 millimeter. Yeah, this is all shot on GoPro. GoPro's roughly 16, hence the um, not amazing quality to some of this stuff. Yeah, so again, there's I think there's a time and a place for it, but I think that I haven't quite mastered how to use it. I think I need to take that lens down to the waterfront. I think to, I think I need to take that lens into the country and do landscapes like that's I think where that 16 millimeter sweet spot is or for shooting videos, you know, and I think the world's smallest lens cap, which is the lens cap here for my 16 millimeter um, is going to stay on for a bit and I'm going to play more with the 50 play way more with the 50 millimeter because I think 50 85 for the type of photography that I went out and did yesterday, the 50. 85 would have been perfect, but hindsight's always 2020 when it comes to these things, man. So let us get into something we like to call real photo reviews. Let's see what is happening here in the submissions. We have some photos from Julie. We have photos from photos from less we looked at already Jilly did some photographs of an event recently i loaned her my gary fong and my speedlight canon speedlight you can see that the Gary Fong, what that light looks like when you're shooting this kind of work in this kind of a room really works. So Julie, good for you. This stuff, definitely no shadow on the wall. Like it really looks great. Max looks great. Even the vertical photography looks great. Family shot. Yeah, I'm telling you the Gary Fong, if you're ever doing event photography, um, I'll show you this in a sec when we finish looking at these photos. 
Yeah, this stuff is great, Julie. You should be happy. All right, let's look at some photos from Les. But before that, Gary Fong, this is a Gary Fong. What happens is you put this on top of your flash, which is usually aimed this way, but it usually also flips straight. You make your flash like this. You put it on the camera. You take pictures. Everywhere that you aim, it get, not only does this go up and hit the ceiling, it also sends light all around and gives you this shadowless, beautiful, even light. If you ever have to do event coverage, that's the setup. If you don't have a way to take your flash off the camera and do more creative light like this, which is also hard to shoot one handed, this on the flash aimed up like this, click, 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 you get great speed light photography all night long. All right, let's get into Brother Less. This looks like you shot this with your Canon due to the beautiful depth of field. So let's get into this. Less great focus. Great focus. This is a great shot. Exposure wise is a bit hot up in the corners. You might try a little vignetting in Lightroom. Just darkens the corners. Let's go, Andy. Glad you're here, girl. Just darkens the corners just a little bit up here. Um, also, there's a slider called highlights. If you pull that highlight slider down, and I'm assuming that you're working in Lightroom, it's going to make this a little less hot. If you're not working in Lightroom, if you're doing this on your phone, there is also a highlight slider. You can pull the highlights to the negative. That's gonna bring this burnout back. And again, I would darken the corners just to bring your eye right to the strawberries here, big bro, because this is where you want people's eyes to go. If you just darken here, 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 just a little bit, forces the eye there because this is such a light spot our eye goes directly here our eye goes here our eye goes anywhere where there's a bright spot before we actually go to the color so compositionally though it's strong a little center biased yes but um definitely great technically i know that um i know that some of these photographs are just to document how beautiful your strawberries are looking right now. <laughs> so congratulations on how amazing. If these are in fact strawberries, right? Not raspberries. These are strawberries, right? Strawberries? Raspberries, less. I think they're strawberries. Um, and I see you got new ones. All food growing in the backyard. I'm not sure what this is. Although obviously a beautiful photograph, but I'm not sure what's flowering here, Les. You got to tell me what um, what these buds are. Like I'm, I don't know this plant like off by heart, and I know you said that all of this is food that you're growing in your backyard. So I want to know like what everything is. Okay, let's look at another. This is definitely, I'll say, blueberries or blackberries. Um, this is a close-up, which is really sharp focus less and great composition. I like the composition of this. If you see it as a cover, it's strong. I mean, again, you're documenting your backyard. I can't break your balls too much. I would love this to be just a touch lower. I do know that you did not do that because you're trying to keep this in the frame and not crop it. In that case, I would say stand up on your tiptoes so you're aiming down a little bit. So that's gonna bring this a little bit closer in your lens perspective, but out of focus. So you can kind of like stack what's happening here, what's happening here and what's happening there. But that might involve you standing on a stool, getting on a lap or something that just lets you aim down a little bit. Um, that would also take away just that little bit of distraction that's happening there and give us just all clean green as a background. Again, it's like thoughts on how you can document the food in your garden a little bit more printable like let's look at this one less that's great super sharp this one's in direct light which makes it really hard because it's almost like you're the sun is hitting it straight and because the sun's hitting it straight like we don't get the depth we definitely get the shadows behind 
but this is like relatively i mean it is definitely coming in a little bit from the top you can see that here a little bit from the top but i feel like the exposure maybe um maybe this one we drop the exposure because it feels a little light maybe we drop this one minus half a stop if you think about your dial if that's zero and that way is negative and that way is plus just push your dial in the negative direction also um laying on the ground shot also which one was the laying on the ground shot less um not sure i know which one it is oh this is sick yeah, i think this is the best one this is the last photo compositionally less this is an 11. this is definitely for me your best photo this is really like beautiful focus although the focus really is here on what looks to be a tomato plant i want to say um strawberries he says but this the spider just climbing on an invisible web is really sick like this one's super dope less you should be really happy that one's sick i mean yes you're documenting what's happening in your backyard but that one's super dope super dope all right let's get into more food growing from less in the backyard this is a nice horizontal this is the close-up and less look at this crop if that's how close up we got this is the whole image but this one i would love to see like punched in just a little bit and possibly dropping this down to like either this corner over here um maybe even up here in this corner just to change up the composition from it being dead center also the highlight recovery meaning the highlight slider you can use that to like cut down some of this brightness so your eye goes right to um the berries for sure the bushes are waist high like i'm sure they're <laughs> they're massive less <laughs> waist high that's the whole photo again guys all right let's get into i think less has a couple more yeah this is like berries these are blackberries they gotta be blueberries he said blueberries preston we are coming up to the end of the episode today but all he needs to do is follow this link um which is the, the discord that'll give you the link it's also in the description of every video that you're ever watched and you just um, submit in the AAPP, which is Ask a Photo Pro submissions folder. I will be trying to look at some more photos on Thursday. I try to keep these episodes a tight hour. And when people are submitting, when we're getting close to the end of the hour, it's a little tricky. But um, the fact that you want to submit is amazing. Submit in the next episode we do Thursday, we'll get looking at your photos, Preston. All right, let's get into Les's last photo from this particular set. And this is a raspberry. This is the close-up detail. This guy looks like he needs some water, this particular stem. But I don't know anything about growing raspberries. So <laughs> I don't know anything about submitting, um, I mean, about growing this type of fruit exposure is a little hot on this one less you can see um although i know you're exposing here for the shadows to make sure that the shadows are showing properly i still think that it's a little too bright i think you could pull the exposure back by quite a bit just to again cut some of this that's happening in the background cut um and just take down some of this brightness so our eye focuses on the subject which is here and of all the shots that you've shot today less like there's been some really great ones i'm going to try to find my favorite right now because i do believe that's the last one from huh it's tricky less but i think your best of the day is this photo like i i think this is your banger it's a really great shot that's both 
visually appealing it's good to look at like it 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 has color it has depth of of, of composition and um it's documenting something that you're growing the spider is beautiful the composition is great so that's my favorite amazing brother all right the last yes is my actual brother so um yes we call each other brother he's my brother <laughs> tudor the dj um cool photo of his water bottle he says let's get into this photo from tudor tudor the dj I, I don't even know what has happened is this in a steam room is that what's happening i'm wondering where the steam is coming i'm wondering if you're bringing it in on its own focus is a little soft there mister so you can see how as we scroll up the bottle there's no spot that's really tack tack up here gets closer but when we have writing on the bottle you want to be able to read the writing almost more so than see the top unless you're marketing like this crazy enclosure um couple of distractions in the background like this cord back here i would like to be away this thing here there's just a couple of things like if you're gonna do a product shot of your bottle just really set it up and like light it and if you have steam a smoke machine or whatever you're using to bring in that steam spritz the bottle just bring in all those elements we're losing a little bit of the edge of the bottle bring in a little bit of rear light put it a black on black use reflectors to kick in without having hot spot reflections this hot spot that you have here with no light down here rather than lighting with a light bulb or a light source here and trying to light this how you do it is you use a white card you take your light bulb that's directional you light the card the card kicks back the reflection and the reflection goes the whole way down the bottle and gives you that white line and you can do the same thing on the other side to give you that negative edge or you can use a blackboard to give you that beautiful um, black negative reflection that's how we shoot bottles it's all about um, taking your light and bouncing it so it comes back as an even sheet of light rather than a small solid source Tudor I hope that helps all right let's get into more car photography from brother Les Alice your wide angles are amazing your wide angles are amazing Les this car is so meaty we have so many to go through now. I'm going to have to go a little bit faster. This is dope, Les. This is a Charger, I'm imagining. Um, an RS. It's a Camaro. This is a Camaro. Gorgeous, bro. Crazy. And my brother does the paint work. That's why he's showing. My brother restores these cars and does the best paint in the industry. Thanks for sharing, Les. That's so sick. This is another one. Um, oh, this car is a, this other car, sorry, is a 67 Camaro, um, done by noon hot rods. Um, yeah, this is a really great one. And Les says he helped a buddy with color correction on this car. Which is great. I mean, people bring their most prized possessions to my big bro. That's super sick, Les. And this is a 72 charger. This is definitely a shot shot with your phone. Look how wide that is, Les. That's so crazy. Your paintwork is nuts. Nuts. Julie submitted some more photos from her photo walk. This is High Park, black and white, 50 millimeter. And this is, again, a series that I loved. I thought it was amazing. I like the little duck edition, Julie. This is a great one. This is one worth opening up. Really great. Great focus. By the way, no excuses. Julie's shooting with a camera, Canon 6D, the original 6D, 
It's from 13 years ago. Um, it's a lens that's a hundred dollar 50 millimeter lens. Julie just makes the equipment that she has work for her. And the fact that she has one lens, the fact that it's a 50 makes that lens be easier to learn and actually shoot all kinds of different work with. So great job, Julie. Great job. All right, let's look at some more from this set. So that is the first. Second with some duckies. That's the one that I just opened. This is really pretty. I really like this bird in the background. This is really strong. I like the composition, the offset, the space that you've given the water, the reflections down here, and again, the black and white. It's very, it's very stark and powerful. Definitely another one worth opening. You can see how great that crane is in the background. Look at it when I crop it this way um, versus the whole picture. It actually looks great cropped in this way as well. So just thoughts on different ways that you can use this photo as far as cropping. That's this picture. This is another great one and definitely worthy of opening. The way that you're in the darkness and looking that way out into the light, the way that the trees like create this tunnel that like it creates mystery and all of this. This is one of the best photos that you're just sharing now that like, I don't know whether you missed it the first time around, but this is like magical and could be used for stock photography. It could be a book cover. It could be used as a background for a movie poster. It could be used as a composite background for other elements to be, <clears throat> excuse me, added in post. It's a great shot. There's lots of different ways that you can um, use this photo, Julie. You should be happy. Really like that one. And this last photo is the same idea, but with a road, which I think is fantastic. It's the same idea, but with a road where you get that same mystery, that same feeling of you don't know what's up and around the corner. This is a book cover. Like, it's a book cover. You know, The Lost Highway. There's so many different... Um, uh, ways of fiction that you can add to this. There's like items of elements, digital elements you can add to this. This is a great shot, Julie. You should be very happy. This is great. Great, great, great work. Few more from my brother. This is my mom done in pencil by Leslie. Very good. My brother's been working on this painting for a long time. You guys, I mean, this picture for a long time. You guys all know this. Very, very wicked, bro. Very sick. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, follow my brother on YouTube. He's definitely been documenting as he's been going through um, this whole process working on the piece. He's now saying it's done and signed. This is my brother in the flesh. In case you aren't aware of what this guy looks like, he looks just like me, doesn't he? <laughs> and one of his green peppers unless that's a red pepper that hasn't turned green yet and some of these berries starting to get their shape very sick very sick and lastly alice alice has gone and made me look bad alice has gone and showed me some wide angle photos that you've made with the 24 alice um and the 24, Preston, um, we do these three days a week, my friend. You know you know that you're gonna have an opportunity. We're just getting on into the hour and I just know like, it gets hard to get people to pay attention to an entire hour of reviewing photos when it's not theirs. Photo reviews are most relevant to the people who submit photos regularly. So I'm trying to spread it out a little bit and do it at the end of my episodes for the true fans who really benefit and feel the benefit from these photo reviews. All right, Alice, you're making me look bad. This is so excellent. So excellent. The location is so perfect. This is so great. Alice says this is with an 11 millimeter lens. Alice, this gets opened. This gets opened. Is this, if this shot is not in your portfolio, 
Alice, we need to talk about that. This picture is a portfolio level idea and execution. It is a beautiful, artful portfolio level photo and I've never seen it before. So I don't know if you shot it a while ago or if it's recent, but I want you to know this is a great photo and fits really well with the Subway series that I really went um, really went crazy over. You remember the Subway series with the reflection and the moving train that I said this should be a print? Vicky said she shot this on Mother's Day. Well, if it's not just me, leave a comment if you're watching this after the fact about how great this photo is for Vicky so she knows she's done good just in case you don't trust me vicky i think that this is really really good really good this is another version of it which is a uh, vertical and look at this as a cover like are you kidding me vicky look at this as a cover like the fact that and I'm going to quote you. I honestly didn't think it was good enough. That's why it took me so long to share. Vicky, this is spectacular work. You should be absolutely thrilled about this work. Like, it is so great. And the live comments that you're getting right now, you can see it's not just me. Now, where the 11 millimeter gets weird is in this situation. And this is the situation that I felt as well with the 16. If you're not creating interesting perspective, if you try to treat a super wide angle, just like everything else, you fail. But if you look up, if you lie on the ground, look up. If you're looking for interesting angles, if you're looking down, you're able to really get some real interesting perspectives, which I think you did here. And you did here with the subsequent horizontal photo, Vicky. So that to me is how we need to learn to use our wide angle lenses because I think this starts to get just a little bit too bendy, but you can like move, cut the green away, show just the buildings and have all the buildings coming in over top of you like you did here. Only instead of being inside the building, you're outside the building, but you're aiming up to show these buildings around. Like, I feel like that's the way to use that lens. This picture makes me feel like looking at my own photos where it's like there's something here, but it's not it yet. Um, the first two absolute home runs. Put them on Adobe stock right now. Guys, I hope you appreciate today's episode where we're talking about how wide is too wide. How wide, how wide is too wide? Vicky, I, I, have, an, I have a 16. I think a 16 is too wide. Vicky just proved that she can make incredible work with an 11 millimeter if the idea is right, if the perspective is right. And I think in conclusion, I just need to practice with it more and learn more about what I'm looking at. I can't treat a 16 the same way that I treat every other lens. Guys, if you guys agree with my conclusion, definitely hit the subscribe button and also hit the subscribe button if you like this type of content, photography related, chatty, talks, podcast, always on a topic, but also, um, learning about you and trying to help you guys get your photography to the next level. I will be back Thursday. I will be back Sunday for behind the picture and perhaps some surprise IRL streams in a new spot. I appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on Thursday.
Thanks everybody for being here. Thanks everybody for watching.